All right, welcome everyone. Thanks for coming by. Hey, uh, we're gonna have a real great time. We're gonna actually create a beautiful uh, shore scene. This is a um, painting I did about maybe seven years or so ago, and uh, it was of a vacation house that my family uh, had, and we would go there in the summertime and um, just had great times at the shore. It's right on the ocean, right on the beach. Um, so the vantage point of this painting is actually the beaches behind us, or as we're sitting here viewing the painting, the beach is behind us, the ocean, and we're looking at the back of the house, which is um, faces the ocean. So, and it's a beautiful house. It has you know tons of uh, balconies and decks and um, places to uh, have picnics and and food. And there's umbrellas out there and um, tons of windows on the back of the um, the house and. It's a beautiful setting, a great painting to do, it's fun. And this was seven years ago, so I, I think sometimes um, I would have a moment of genius, or not genius, but just sometimes I would do a painting, and I this one came out incredibly well for uh, that time when I was painting many years ago already, um, where um, it's just kind of fun. I was having a good time thinking about uh, the shore, uh, family, you know, getting together, times at the beach in the summertime so it was just like I think it just had to come out good because you're just you're just thinking about all the fun times you know on vacation whatever so let's get into it let's have that feeling of um uh if you can bring that emotion of let's say um a vacation that you might have gone to or um if you spend a weekend go on a weekend somewhere to do a special um uh visit somewhere to family friends or you go to a special location with some friends, whatever it is, if you can kind of tie that emotion into your work uh, at times, let's say not every time we can do that, but it really does help. It creates more of a, a lively, fun feel to a painting. And that's what I think I had here. So even going back seven years ago, I somehow captured that. It was like um, a painting that came out really so, it was, a, it was a lot better than what I was painting at the time. So it just was, great and I decided let me frame this and I got excited and put it in a frame so frame your work too if you have a painting that comes out really good uh, get a mat for it a frame put it in a frame and this way you have you can display it in your house your place you can give it as a gift whatever but always remember you know um, if you have a painting that comes out really good definitely frame it put it in you know mat it and frame it and just get it done quickly or even bring it or have someone do it that's handy or a frame shop, uh, so forth. All right, so let's zoom in, take a look closer here. And uh, so it's kind of simple. It's the house, the back of the house. And um, I did like a vignette, so it's softened out on the edges. So I didn't paint right out to the borders. I left it purposely soft around the out outer edges, as you can see here, like around here. It's all soft and diffused around the outer borders with white paper and just a little bit of wash, some splashes, and and I just uh, feathered out the sky wash a little bit into the white paper. So I utilized the watercolor paper here to its fullest. And some, this was from a photograph, and I think I might have added in the hurricane fence. That might not have been in the um, photograph. Not sure now, I, I don't recall uh, if the fence, I think the hurricane fence was there actually in the figures. So we you know a couple small children having a fun time. They're walking along the side here, uh, coming from the beach. They have their towels on and bathing suits are having a great time. And then we have some other figures on top here on the house. They're having some uh, some food or some coffee or tea or some iced tea up on the balcony here with the umbrella and some other figures looking out at the ocean and the beach. So this is really just a, a little fun, again, painting we can do. Let's try it. Let's give it a, a go. Uh, this is really simple, basically rectangle shapes for the house and then a, a pine or two, pine tree or two over here and some bushes. And then just a small bit of the neighboring house here, which was just, you know, a, 
at the gable end of a roof and then a um, chimney area on the side and some more bushes over here and then just here some loose washes where the sand is and the hurricane fence of course getting large to small diminishing as it goes all the way into the distance and a little more here just for a uh, little bit of balance to it and some splashing and so this is a let's have a fun time doing this we'll go step by step we'll have uh, a lot of fun doing it we'll kind of go through each step of the way how to get this accomplished and um, as always you can use this as your um, subject matter to paint from so if, uh, if you hit pause on your video at this point you can use this and then if I zoom in like that you can get more detail Okay, so we're going to get started in just a second. Um, I'm going to get my uh, paper, set it up on my board here, and uh, we'll get started with the drawing. Okay, we're back. We're getting prepped here for our painting, our drawing and our painting. Are you ready? Let's get going. All right, so we, I'm trying to actually uh, replicate the, uh, the same uh, size that I did the original. So it's about an eight by eight. So I have uh, an eight by uh, eight here. So that's uh, eight by eight paper, approximately. This is uh, Arches rough paper. Um, and that's, uh, my original paper might have been a little softer. It looks like a, not as, it might have been like a, um, that looks like, from what I can see, uh, that might be, hmm, it's hard to say. It doesn't look like rough and it doesn't look like smooth paper. It's kind of like an in-between type of paper there. Hmm. I think it's actually Strathmore uh, watercolor paper. I used Strathmore many years ago. I used that a lot uh, for my watercolor painting and as well as sketching everything. I just used to always buy Strathmore because it's really, really good quality. It's not super expensive, but it's not uh, uh, lower end uh, student grade either. It's sort of in between. So that's a good paper I used to use all the time. I still use it now, but not as frequently. And uh, that is, yeah, that looks like Strathmore watercolor paper uh, on the original. So we're using again Arches uh, rough paper for our our painting here. I will just add a few um, I'm going to add some colors here. French ultramarine blue we need. I just like to have, I don't like to, when my colors run low, I try to fill the palette up. Although I'm not going to be using a tremendous amount of French Ultra and Blue. And already I'm looking across from me at my painting and thinking of what colors. So I probably have enough colors in there, but again, I, I try to keep the palette filled with colors. Fresh squeezed paint. Um, I'm running low on uh, Burn Umber. So I'm gonna, I buy the large tubes on paints that I use a lot of. So like Burnt Umber, I use a lot of Burnt Umber, a lot of French Ultramarine Blue, so I'll buy the large Windsor & Newton tubes. And then maybe some of my like cadmiums and things, I buy smaller tubes, the um, Holbein. But mostly I buy the Windsor & Newton paints. And uh, everything else looks good. The greens, I think I need some sap green there. We're going to use green here and 
permanent sap green, Windsor Newton, we use a lot of that. And I use my apron to open up the cap if it's a little bit tight and hard to open. And we got some sap green there. There we go. And olive green looks okay. And I think we have yeah, I think we have everything else pretty good. Alright, so we have Anything that's really low, that we don't have enough of, we add in some paint. And it looks good. I like to keep my paints, uh, all my cool colors, in one bag, baggie. So all the colors that I use on a constant basis that are in this palette, I keep maybe all those tubes, my cool, co uh, cool colors in that one bag. A hefty bag, Ziploc, and then the other warm colors I keep in the other bag. And that's all the cool, you know, the cool, uh, warm colors, the yellows, the reds, browns, reddish browns. So anything in the warmer kind of feel, that goes in the warm colors. So I just keep my warm and cool separated into two bags. It just narrows it down. So if I need to go with it, you know, if I need to fill up my palette quick and I need just a few colors, I know right away. I've got to grab, you know, the, the, the warm colors or the cool colors quickly and kind of narrows things down a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to we'll get our pencil. I'll use an office pencil. So now for this painting, uh, the first thing we can do is we're going to look at it from the perspective of the layout of the, the house here, this shore house, beautiful shore house. It's actually in the center of the picture. So it's like centrally located. And then we just have the other features, interesting things around it, the sky colors, the figures in the foreground with the fencing, the hurricane fence. So We'll try to get a feel for that and say, well, where is the house sitting in the picture? It's a little bit, the top of the house is about halfway, just a touch above halfway. So if we were to take our marker and say, okay, these, this is the halfway point of the picture, about half. The top of the house is just a little bit above the halfway point, so we'll say about here. Now we look and say, all right, the top of the house is here, and it's maybe about, so it's about a third, and a third, and a third. So if we were to say that the picture is broken into thirds, third, one third, one third, and one third here, equal distances. The house is about one-third width uh, on the top. And um, so we, we're going to start the house. We're going to do a – you can do a preliminary sketch where you just rough it out. Let's rough it out here quickly. Okay, hopefully we can see this on, on uh, camera here. So I'm just roughing this out quick. Then we see that the balcony on the lower floor, the first floor, actually the second floor, the balcony on the second floor is here. And it goes down here. We're going to have some trees and bushes over here to sort of we won't have to worry about drawing any, any real details that much over here on this side of the house because we're going to have bushes in front of that there and there's some shadows and things so no worries on that. And then over here, the um, we're seeing this in, in three dimensions here. So. Since we're seeing this in three dimensions, I can kind of make this sketch. Um, 
I can kind of over exaggerate here a little bit. But so here, if we have the house here, and we have the second floor up here and the first floor here, like that, it's sort of like a cake or something, or it could be um, just two rectangles, two boxes, let's say, two rectangles on top, one on top of the other here, one, two. Now here's where we just got a little bit of uh, angles involved. The angle here on this um, portion of the house is very slight, just like that. Very slight, this one's a little more. So as we go higher up vertically, you see a little more angle on the uh, on the walls over here. So that's all you have to really remember on this right side of the house. This other side of the house here, there's no angles. We don't see any angles or that third dimensional feel. It's just really on the right side of the house. And so we want to get this because this does bring a lot of um, feel into the picture of you know the the feeling of the house like trailing off into the distance and you, you get that you know that feel of um, three-dimensional space in, in our picture here in our painting so just a mild angle on that first floor and then when we go up to the second floor here you, you see more of a steeper angle and that's sort of how things are when you're seeing them in real life the higher things are going upward the steeper the angles become, if that makes sense. So here we're seeing a straight line as we're going higher up vertically, going up vertically this way, you're seeing a slight angle there and then as we get a little higher you're seeing a little more of that angle so the angle is starting to tip up this way a little bit, that's all. And that's all you have to remember here. You don't want to go too extreme. Uh, with your angles, if anything, you can make them a little less than what I have them. But if you do, just if anything, just recall adding a little bit of angle to the upper floor. The first floor you can leave almost straight without any angle. A little bit of angle helps. And then this upper one, you just add a little bit of angle. It's not much, you can see. If you kind of view it as like a pie slice maybe or something. So the pie, you know, it's like it gets to be... Um, so if we just, you can kind of see how that, if we're to draw a straight line across level, that angle is about, you know, a pie slice, like not, not a, just an average size pie slice there. And that, uh, that kind of looks pretty good. All right, so we're gonna draw that, just to kind of explain what I'm gonna do as I draw. I remember when I did this originally, I erased a lot of times over on this side of the house and I had a hard time figuring out the angles. So I just do remember that for sure, I'm trying to get this. I was looking at the photograph and looking back and forth and, and eventually I just went with pretty much straight across here and there's a lot of bushes here so you can don't have to worry too much about that and then over here this is about here so the first floor goes further in the distance here and so already we're developing our house, our beautiful shore house here, right on the beach, right on the ocean. And we have, we're going to do the, the sand here and some of the dunes and the weeds and things. We'll fill in those details with paint. And um, we're going to have the top of the house here. with our railings. So this is a, a rooftop that you they can have. A, maybe there's a patio up on this rooftop. You can come out and look and sit and look out at the ocean from the top patio. 
and so we just put in some lines to remember these are the railings. We'll do that with paint too. We're going to paint that stuff in. We're not going to get involved with all this pencil drawing of railings and things like that. It doesn't make sense. We'll show, we'll show the method of how to get all these railings in quickly and effectively with the watercolor brush instead of sitting here trying to do a uh, maddening pencil drawing of all the details. That's the thing with watercolor. If you simplify things down, try painting in as much detail as you can. You can't always do that, but it is important if you can remember to try to paint in some details here and there instead of trying to draw them in. So I just put a couple railing hash marks to remember that this is the railing up top. And then here we'll start getting in our uh, windows and doors. So there's some patio sliding doors and windows on the back of this house. So we're going to go with one there. And there's another one on this side over here. So we just were looking at the drawing. And if I change it a little bit, don't worry, you can change yours too, your drawing and your painting a little bit here and there. It doesn't have to be exact. And this center section is just a plain wall. And then we're going to have our umbrella here. So we're just going to make our umbrella here. And a little bit of shadow under the umbrella. And then there's more railings here. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go across all the way. If you want, you can add a, a ruler to this. You can add a ruler to get your railing a little straight, like that. And the same thing here. We can use a ruler. And then here with the railing on this side of the house, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get thinner as it goes into the distance, into the further distance here. So again, we're going to have a little bit of that angle. Like that. So you'll see that angle go down just a little bit. All right. <clears throat> we're coming along really well here. We have um, now the details of the window. We want to get those good. So this is thirds, the window. Third and a third, that gives us our window. The frames of the windows. And then we go across the top of the windows for our top portion of the sliding doors, which are in the center of these window frames. And then you have the um, eyebrow arches, the soft arches on top. And then we have a little darker detail over here. This is an awning, I think. But you don't have to get into a serious, tremendous details. We can leave things unfinished until we start painting. This is a column here. Oh, this is a post holding up the deck above. That there is okay. So we're just looking around. What can we do? Um, we have our figures over here. I'll put a railing, the top railing, I'll put here. So we'll just make this a little more So those are our figures there on this side. And then we have um, some figures here at the, uh, at the umbrella. There's a picnic, a picnic table here with the umbrella. We don't see a lot of detail because we have the railings here going across. So it hides some of the details behind, and that's fine. And then the lower floor, let's start the lower floor here, the column for the lower floor is here. And again, we'll, there's, again, you can, you can use a ruler here if you feel comfortable. You can just draw another straight line.
And again, these are some bushes and things over here, some trees. And on the first floor, we do have windows. And there's a lot of shade under here, a lot of shadowing. So we don't have to get too involved. We can kind of, I'm gonna stick with the picture and use that as my guide. The painting I did previously, and I'm gonna use the, these are some sliding doors and things here. And this is also has railings. So we have more railings here. And then that's the uh, floor of the first floor, the decking that goes around the house. And then we have some of the house here showing, the foundation area, the bottom of the house underneath. There's probably some um, posts underneath that hold up the porch here. And that is covered with some white siding or wood, some type of facade material. And then here we have the side going this way. And again, these are the railings on the lower floor, the first floor. And these are the sliding doors on the first floor. And glass windows. And these might be some windows. And then some more sliding doors and windows over here. So we notice that there's a lot of darks on the bottom floor. So we just keep drawing in our darks, going back to our painting. So if I just quickly look at the painting, I'm going to bring it back into view for just a second. So you can just see that I'm getting the basic shape first of the building with the angles. And then I just started doing all my windows and my railings, just roughing it in very lightly because we're going to paint in with our brush all those details of the railings as we go. And just uh, now I'm getting in the windows on the underside of this deck. And so we remember that these porches, the balcony up top and the deck down below are sticking out from the house about whatever, six, eight feet. So you get all that nice, beautiful dark shadowing underneath your balcony here. And then we get some nice uh, feel of uh, three-dimensional uh, excitement on this lower balcony area with the windows and doors down here. And then up here, the gorgeous windows and the, you know, so we have all the details coming together now in our sketch. And we're going to paint most of it. With our, with our paints and our brush. We're not going to get too worried about pencil drawing in every detail. If we can just get the basic concept of what we're trying to achieve with our pencil drawing and not getting too overwhelmed with details, that's going to make our painting look great. So let's, uh, I'll set this up across from me again. And we're going to keep continuing on here. So we also have uh, windows over here. And what happens is here, we can leave the wall here. At this point, just like that. This will be a column that holds up the balcony on top here. And this section right here, that can be left for um, seeing through the seeing through the uh, lower deck area. So that will be sky back here and trees or whatever it is back here. The street, if there's a street, which there is, there's a street behind this where the um, parking is and everything for this house. You'll be able to see through this section of the house right here. So the house wall ends here, similar to here. It just is a little further out, not to get too much detail into this, but just this will help to make it look more interesting if we can leave that little spot 
with um, some details of maybe like sky or other things, maybe some trees or bushes or something. So we've got all our basic ha structure in here. Let's. We're going to do some more glass uh, doors here. These are some sliding doors on this side. And we'll just put a couple there. This side's a little easier to manage. Not much detail there. And that's about good. Here, we can say that the house over here is about there. We'll do one more window there. And then you can see through here too. This would be looking through to the other side of the house, like uh, the street side. So we might see some sky over here or some bushes, stuff like that. So it's nice to leave some areas you can see through versus blocking it all off. If you can leave some kind of like uh, little areas to see through your structures and your subject matter as you draw, that's all the better. All right, now we see that, let's take a quick break. We've been drawing now for about 20 minutes. Let's take a quick break. We'll finish up doing our house next door to this house, our beautiful shore house here. And we'll draw the pine tree over here and some of the fencing, and then I think we'll be ready to paint. So let's take a break. We've did a, you know, we did a lot of drawing, uh, especially with drawing, it takes a lot a concentration and so we need to just relax for 10-15 minutes I have a seat since I'm standing right now at my art table I'm gonna go have a seat have some coffee watch a little TV for 10-15 minutes and then I'll come back and we'll start up again all right hey we're back in business here we uh, have made good progress we've got our our shore house our beautiful shore house here uh, sketched out. You know, we, we did a contour drawing here basically is what we did. We did a contour drawing. We took our time and we got in all of the major um, features of the house without going into, you know, incredible details because we are going to use our brush. So we will use our uh, watercolor brush to paint in fine details like the railings. So we will use our watercolor brush to get all these details in the railings going all the way along here and the same thing down here all like that so and then down here too with our with our sharp you need a sharp watercolor brush here you can see the point here so to get these fine details in your watercolor you are going to need a, a really good sharp uh, watercolor brush with a good sharp point a good sharp tip on here and this is great my brush here is pretty much new. It's only a year old, and it's a, a Da Vinci number no. five travel brush. And then we're going to get those those details in. We're going to paint negative shape painting. We'll talk about that as we uh, start painting and, and going into the painting portion of the um, uh, this video. A perfect time for me to just mention: Hey, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. We do videos here every week, so you're doing paintings, full-size paintings like this. I also have other videos uh, each week. We're starting to do now more of a uh, working in with our normal routine of doing uh, our regular full-size watercolor paintings. We're working in drawing. Uh, so contour drawing. Contour drawing is incredibly important. As you can see in a painting like this, we have to have our drawing skills, you know, at a decent level. You don't have to be a master at drawing, but we have to be able to handle drawing basic subject matter like a house or fruit or uh, you know any kind of still life things uh, in still life you might paint like cups saucers maybe you know like I said fruit apples oranges peppers lemons uh, grapes whatever the case we have to be able to handle those more simple things but then again too we have to be able to draw some architecture so don't worry keep coming back to my channel hit the notification bell so this way you get those notifications when we do our quick 10 15 minute videos on drawing and you can just draw along for 10 or 15 minutes get your practice time in on your drawing each week maybe once or twice and then you know after a couple months or so you're going to see your drawing skills improve dramatically so don't forget that remember if you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell you're going to get all the videos um, with the paintings 
full paintings as well as our drawing videos, our contour drawing videos that we're doing now on more of a frequent basis. So let's uh, get started on uh, finishing up the drawing here. I'll sharpen my pencil here. Okay, again, let's take one more look as we go. Um, what I'll do is I'll zoom in just a little bit here. All right, so now you can see we've drawn the house. We got that big basic shape of the center of our painting completed. Now we're going to draw in the pine trees over here. We're going to draw in just a little small portion of the neighboring house here. It's a stucco house with a chimney. And we'll draw in our foreground up, uh, figures, a couple, two or three children having a great time. They're coming back from the beach. They have their towels and their buckets and wheelbarrows and stuff of toys and things. And we have our hurricane fence here. We're going to draw in that too, very lightly though. We're going to do most of this with the brush, with our hurricane fence. So that won't be too difficult to... Um, get a handle on as far as our drawing. So mo most of our drawing is now complete, but we will get some more detail in just so we have uh, a little more uh, pencil lines to work from when we start going in and painting. Okay, so now we'll put this across. Now we're readjusted with our zoom lens. Okay. We're going to have our pine tree here. I'm going to use my, again, my picture that I, my original painting. I'm going to look and say, how high is that pine tree? And when I look, it's about just a little bit below the t very highest point of the the house here, the railings up here on top. So I'm going to go across and then say right there. And I just very slightly couple pencil lines to it's a pine tree and there's another one here. And we're going to paint those in, the details. But I just wanted to get those in here. Okay, now these pine trees have some bushes underneath. I'll pencil those in. And then I say, where's my hurricane fence starting? Well, it, it starts a little bit lower over here. So we'll start there. And then it curves around and it comes forward like this. And that looks good. So then we have our hurricane fence slats that are here. And we're going to start a good way to do this light pencil line carefully looking at the picture so that we get that diminishing feel of the fence. So I basically funneled it down. If you can imagine, I'll go back again to my drawings here. All we did with that fence is basically we started, we got our first start to our fence, that first slat of the fence in the first couple. We got it the proper height looking at our painting, our original painting. And then we said, all right, now we're going to have to make it the correct height over here on the side. So if our pine trees are here, the fence over here is very small. When you look in the distance, you're just going to see a tiny little bit of those fences like that. Perfect. Then we just lightly pencil in the feel of the flowing feel of the fence like that. The bottom can be any angle really you can doesn't have to be like you know super accurate or anything you just have to kind of get the flow for it from one end to the next 
you know, it could be, you know, it could, you could do, you could do anything. It looks like this in the painting. I'm going to follow the painting. And then up top, that's when you just keep an eye on the, the distance between the, I'll erase that line there. And then we just keep thinning down that line until it meets up with the top of the fence there. And that's it. So you meet up with the top of the fence here. You draw this in first. So you have your, that's the height of the fence here in the distance, about only one quarter of the height of this one. And then that's it. And it goes right there. And then we just, just do a couple quick light pencil lines. And then we have the wire, which we can just pencil in quick. Or we'll do that when we paint. And that's really it. And then over here you have, we have some more hurricane fence there we just put in for effect. Okay, so now and that's all. And I just want to keep, I want to remember to put some of these little grasses and weeds and things. So I'll just pencil in a few. And let's go over here. So we, we're working our way across this way. And we'll go over here. And our architecture is about here. that and that's a house here yeah, maybe there's a window there like that and there's some other bushes maybe some more trees over here maybe a pine tree over here too And there's a chimney. Let's do the chimney too as well. And that com comes up. And that's basically like a uh, rectangle. I could view this as a stick of butter. Uh, a um, That could be a stick of butter. This could be a tissue box. I just see it as a shape like that. And there's a little bit of detail at the top. And that's really the main architecture. Now we have our figures here at the table having some lunch. We have our figures here. They're just watching the beautiful ocean. And then we have our two children here. Let's draw them in. And there's some more fencing over here. And they're about here. And I'll just make very... I'm going to paint these in. You can make the figures have motion and one of the figures is pointing maybe they're having a good time just summer day out and I just put the figures a little bit of shadowing underneath them the Sun's coming from behind us so you'll see the shadows going forward like that and uh, we 
we have another figure here. Just really lightly do your figures. Just, you know, you, you might want... I usually just do, like, I try to, um... I get the head, upper body, shorts, and the legs. And then when we paint them in, they look fine. Kind of like carrots, you know, we can see them as carrots. You know, shoulders up top. And then, the, and then the figures slim down at the at the bottom, and less details in the feet and the legs. You know, you're going to do more of your details on the upper shoulders and the arms, and then the pants and the shorts and whatever for our figures. You know, you can just make them looser, more freer looking. We don't have to get too involved with a lot of details with figures, especially in this type of painting. That's really a fun shore type picture. You know, we're just going to get some approximate uh, figures in nothing uh, nothing too and, and you know intense with details okay so now we have our figures in and we're going to go across and do our our hurricane fence over here thing I noticed was this hurricane fence is a little bit high so I'm going to trim down the fence a little bit so I just made the hurricane fence a little bit uh, shorter in height and that'll be fine that looks a little better and that's it sky. We're going to have some seagulls here. And we're very, okay, we're ready to paint, pretty much. A little bit of lines for the, um, lay of the land here. We're going to have some bushes here. There we go. So I just wanted to get in some other details with my pencil just to know I want to put a couple trees here, some bushes over here, bushes here, grass and weeds over here, and then a little bit of the, my brush strokes are going to be like the lay of the land, the sand dune coming down this way. So I'll use that directional line of my pencil line just to remember to do the brush work like this so that you get that feel for the brushwork in the sand. And uh, this here underneath is good. All right, let's take another break. Breaks are great. Concentration, it goes after 20 minutes or so usually. Um, some people, I would say, I would say most people after you have 20 minutes or so, half an hour, concentration level starts to diminish quite a bit. Um, so let's take a break now. We've been working for 20 minutes approximately. Stretch your legs if you're sitting and doing your work. I stand when I do my work. I'm going to sit down now and watch a little bit of uh, YouTube. And then I'll come back in about 15, 20 minutes when I feel a little bit more rested and relaxed. And we'll start painting. All right. We'll be right back. All right, we are set. We have our paints ready to go. 
our brush ready to go. I'm going to pour some water here. We have fresh clean water. And we can start with our darks. That's the best place to, to um, start. Using darks is really an effective way to start your watercolor painting. Now this one we know has plenty of darks. So I'm going to use uh, French ultramarine blue, burnt umber mixed in that, maybe a little bit of purple, and uh, we can use that for our darks here. We could start under here. There's quite a bit of shadowing underneath the uh, the balcony on the second floor, and what I'll do is. I'll put in some umber, raw umber, maybe a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson, and we'll just want to, with our darks, we'll try to add in some warm, warm colors too, besides those dark or cool colors. And then some of the areas are going to, in shadow, will catch some light where the frames of the windows are. So you'll see some of those lines of white paper, like that. Careful not to paint over certain areas. A good way to a good way to um, if you have a spot where you definitely know you you want to make sure you leave a, a white bit of paper for a structural item like the corner of this uh, balcony here when we're drawing we can add in some shading like this and then on this side too So that helps a lot. And I just lifted up a little bit of paint with the tissue. So we're working in our darks here. Some burnt umber and French ultramarine blue again with some purple. And we'll get some more, infuse some more darks in here, here and there. That makes it look more interesting. And then some of those warm colors too. And we will paint this lower section that yellowy color, that nice lemony yellow uh, siding that the uh, that this uh, house is uh, cladded with so we have so 
so we kind of see how we have our darks under here all the way across we will be able to maybe take a few spots here and there where once this all dries and we're done with the painting 100% you can take a little tiny bit of white titanium white paint mixed with some oh, the ever so slightest amount of yellow ochre or raw sienna and we mix that into the white and we can recapture a few lights here and there so if you do go over a, a light area that you think is uh, important you can wait till the end of the painting to add in a few little lights you know here and there some uh, white paint let's say just to you know if you go over a, a spot you thought you should have left uh, light so that's no big deal we'll do that at the end of the painting actually you'll see how we do that so we just keep continuing and we have um, cerulean blue cobalt blue maybe we'll start in with some green as well And again, this is a fun, the sunlight in the sky is up here in the, the windows. So some of the window sections will be dark. Here's where we, we use the, the pointiness of the brush to capture those details. We need to have the details of these windows captured correctly. We don't want to So I just take my brush and make sure it's got that sharp point there. And then we go in and get the, the shapes correct, like that. And some lighter for this window up here, some lighter blue, some green, blue and greens, and I say let's mix up Lots of color. Use lots of variation of color. I mix up some, you can see how I mix up some different colors in different areas of my palette. So we had cerulean blue, a little bit of green over here, purple in the darks over here. You can infuse a few darks too. Up here it's really a lot of light. Underneath here there's a lot of shadow. The sun's coming from behind us. So if you can imagine the sun's coming from like the upper sky behind us. So when the sun comes across this picture on top of this uh, house, our beautiful shore house here, it creates a shadow underneath that balcony up top here. So you see that dark shadowing underneath. And then up top on that second floor you're not getting any shadowing because this um, railing is actually flush with the building so there's no overhang up here on top of this there's nothing you know protruding out from the house above this second floor balcony so this is all getting sunlight here and you can see that the sun is just, is just striking the windows with brightness and So we'll see mostly sky color in the uh, windows. And then for the, the railings, we can go with a little bit of a darker. And that's when we can do some railings here like this. So we didn't have to really do much pencil work for the railings. We can just add them in like this. And we can just a couple here and there. Change the colors of them. Some light, some dark, some warmer, some cooler.
as long as we have a few of the railings here and there, it's going to look fine. And then I'll add in that slip the sliding doors and the windows straight down through. And then we can do, again, we can use some white paint if we had to. If you feel you need to, you can add some white paint. Once the painting's all 100% complete, then you can step back and look at it and say, should I add any more details? Or is it going to look, is it looking good the way it is? It might look good and you won't need to add anything. All right, we're really coming along really nicely. We have a shadow under there. And then we have windows over here too. And I'm not going to make a, a lot of details over here. I'm going to try to keep this minimal. pretty good all right you know what let's take a break you know what we did a lot of focused energy here getting these uh, washes in and it took a lot of patience and careful uh, painting so let's take another quick break we might have been working 15 20 minutes and uh, I think that's a perfect time to take a quick break I'm gonna clean up my pad a little bit and then um, we'll be right back I'll change out the water too Hey, just to mention, hey, if you, have, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I'm going to come in to, you know, give you a call and make sure you're doing your subscriptions here to my channel. You want to make sure you have all these great watercolors uh, coming to your YouTube, your own YouTube site every week. So every week we do, vid you know, videos on watercolors. We do videos on drawing we do every type of subject matter. We do beautiful shore scenes like this. We do seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes, all kinds of subject matter. We do still life, flowers. So we do, we cover everything here on this channel. So don't forget to subscribe. You're just going to miss out if you don't subscribe. If you hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button, then that's just, you know, just as well. You'll, you'll be notified and then you can check out the video quick if you like it. You can watch it and work on it uh, at your leisure. Or if you're um, not so keen on that painting or that video, you can just wait till the, the next week. Or you can go back in my archives. I have hundreds of videos in my archives, too, you can always go back to and watch. Okay? All right, we'll be right back. We're just going to take a quick break. Welcome back. Welcome back. We're getting started again here. So let's have uh, some more fun. We have our brushes, our water. I just got some fresh, clean water. I'm going to take my some paper towels and just dip the paper towel in some water. Then I just wipe up the palette and I make sure to get up all the paint and water too. You don't want to leave any puddles of water in your palette. That, that will actually water down your paint. You don't want that. Um, many times when you see me paint you'll notice I use fresh squeezed tube paint right out of the tube and then right out of the palette on or right out of the wells and into the palette with very little water so to get these dark darks you don't want much water at all you just want really straight paint I've been using just straight paint here with a, a touch of water you know in certain spots but mostly it's so we use some raw umber some green sap green darks we're gonna go back in with darks French ultramarine blue Burnt Umber, French Ultramarine Blue, a little bit of uh, purple, which is Ultramarine Violet, Windsor Newton brand, the best there is. I find for purple, that's my favorite violet color. 
Ultramarine Violet by Winsor Newton. And we have um, Bird on Bird. So we have some good darks there. And then Cerulean Blue. Cobalt Blue. So when I look at my painting across from me, and again, I'll, I'll just lift it up and bring it in view again, just so we kind of see. So, and we can zoom in here a little bit. So you can see I was really focusing on all the darks. That's what I wanted to get in first. That, that's my main priority when I'm doing a painting like this. The darks are easy because there's not much um, variation in darks as far as the tonal value. Like, you know what I mean? The, the light and darkness of it is pretty much consistent. And then I just, you know, I mix it up and add some, you know, warm and cool colors within those darks. But for the most part, the color itself that I'm painting in is mostly comprised of the darkest dark paints that I'm using, which would be ultramarine, French ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And then I add in some purple. And then I add in, of course, some warmer colors, maybe a little bit of touch of red, touch of uh, like umbers, just to give it a variation. But you'll see it's very, very dark. So those are easy to see when you're painting. So if you're working from this painting, you can focus on the darks first because they stick out. They're really easy to see. So you fill the, you know, you paint those in, get those in first, then you work on the medium tones the sand, the sky washes, you know, once you get those these darks in, you're pretty much home free in the painting. And then the rest is just carefully adding in your other colors, uh, colors as you'll see we're going to do next. So let's do that. I'll put this across and we'll zoom back out like that. Okay. So Again, our darks going well. There's some greens over here. And I'm just adding in some uh, some greens. And we're vignetting this, so I'll just splash some clean water on there and just fade that like so. Okay, now we have a interesting color. This is uh, burnt sienna and some yellow ochre type of color. Maybe some raw sienna. for this adjacent house here, next to the our shore house here, and I like to infuse some colors as I go, warm and cool, make it look interesting. And again, we're fading this into the background. Okay, good. We're vignette vignetting this. So we leave it really light. We leave the white of the paper around the entire picture. So we just, at this point here, we fade it 
into the white paper like that. And we can continue with this. This is the chimney here. This is the bright part of the chimney. That's the sunlight is here. And then on this side of the chimney, there's more Let's get some darks up here. And on this side we have purple, burnt umber, French ultramarine. Okay, and I'm careful to do any more details to this. This has to draw, dry a little bit. So sometimes when you're painting, you'll notice you need to sometimes let things dry a little bit. Okay, now I want to remember that this is going to be sky color here. I don't want to paint over that. So I'll put some sky color in here. And on the other side of this post over here. And We'll go up this way. All right, looks good. And since we're doing that, let's do the same thing over here. We said we wanted to leave this over here sky color. So let's get some sky color over here going. And we just fade this here and just add some. There we go. And you let your brush dance around on the page, on the paper, with your washes. Have fun with this. That's the whole key here is we're just having fun. Watercolor takes many years to learn, so whether you're, you know, a beginner or you're an intermediate artist that's been painting only a couple years or five years, or maybe you've been painting 10 or 15 years but you don't have a lot of time because you have a lot of things you have to do in life, obligations and people that you have to um, help in your life and so forth and family and still doesn't matter as long as you're having fun with it, have fun with your, your paints with your brush, your, your art materials, and uh, you'll be fine if you're having fun with it. And you'd never worry about um, how uh, the painting looks. You just have fun with it. If you just learn one or two techniques every once in a while, eventually you just wind up using all those techniques continuously in your painting so that you're always doing the same thing over and over. As you notice for myself, I use the same techniques over and over. Anyone that's, I know many of you that follow me for a long time, you probably have a lot of my techniques already. They're just second nature to you and you just use them as you go and as you paint. And that's that's what I try to do is I try to always cover the same 
techniques that I use on a continual basis. And then uh, it just becomes your technique as well. As long as I'm painting that way and you're following it and using the same technique, you're, you're going to have the same result. All right, so we're, we're doing well. We did our adjacent house here. And we'll add in some, carefully add in some windows here. Like that. You could even work when it's a little bit damp, the paper. Just go in real with, with thick, goopy paint. You don't want to have, like, paint, you know, water, tons of water, and then try to go in and add some darks in there. If you're going to add in some paint while your paper is still damp, you want to make sure it's just strictly the, the paint right from the tube. And then it won't dissipate onto the paper. It'll just... Uh, It'll stay uh, fine without blossoming and cauliflowering and blooming. So, all right, we have that pretty good. All right, so we've done a lot so far. Let's take another break. We've been working for 10, 15 minutes. Um, maybe let's do a few more things here. Let's uh, let's start working our some more of our bushes and weeds and things over here. Raw umber, sap green, a little splashing. Maybe a little bit of uh, French ultramarine blue and sap green to make a nice evergreen type color. And we could do maybe a little evergreen here. And while this is a little bit damp, the paper over here, let's do a little bit of uh, the evergreen color over here too. So we just mixed up some sap green, French ultramarine blue, evergreen color, our nice beautiful pine, pine trees and colors like that. And then we'll go in later and do more finer details. But if we get a little bit of the color in there, we're, we're going to be in good shape here. And we could go right down there. And some here. And flick on some paint. Do a little finger painting there. Then we can use some of our lighter greens there. And then maybe fade it with a little bit of water. That there. And then I'll just blot up a little bit of the water with some tissue there. Like that. And some more darks over here. That makes a good balance. Some of those darker uh, pine trees here and then some dark pine trees over here as well. That makes a good balance in the picture. Uh, I noticed that on my original, I should have probably added a little bit of a counterbalance like this over here. I didn't, so in the picture, my original, I feel that it would have been better if I added something over here, like a darker uh, pine tree on this side. So I can uh, just take a note of that.
Now we'll start working in some brighter greens, cadmium yellow, lemon yellow. And I'm going to add in some of the um, cadmium lemon yellow and a touch of uh, yellow ochre. Actually, I'm not thinking that looks as great. Let me see if I can get a better. I think just the cadmium lemon yellow is going to look good. Maybe just a little bit of cad red. Just to bring in a little bit of that cad red there into the cadmium yellow. And we'll do our main house color, which is basically cadmium lemon yellow. And I just added a very hint of um, cad red in there just to warm it up a touch. It's a little bit cooler on the other side, so I'll add a little bit of blue. Cerulean blue. And this is in the sunlight over here. So I'll just dampen my brush. some lighter and darker tonal values to that yellow here and there. And we'll do the same under here. We just try to remember what was we look back at the picture and say alright what is the walls underneath here and what are the windows to make sure we don't I mean if you paint over the if you paint over some of the windows with the yellow that's fine but let's keep it somewhat accurate so I remember that this wall here was actually the um, siding the cladding of the house yellow and then over here the same thing this uh, part of the house here and then there's a window here, and there's more cladding, cadmium lemon yellow. And then here as well. A little bit of blue. And that looks pretty good. We are in good shape here. So let's uh, take another break. We have some really good color on here. We have our, um, we started out, we faded in our um, darker uh, pine trees with some dark, really nice darks. And you can see they faded to a nice um, medium uh, tonal value for the greens here with some darks in her, you know, in her playing here and there. And then you have, uh, the uh, the neighboring house here with uh, some uh, raw sienna and raw sienna and burnt umber, uh, burnt sienna, and then we had our cadmium lemon yellow with a touch of cad red, just a smidgen of cad red, 
um, to um, add in here for our main house here and that looks pretty good so um, we're going to continue but we want to let this dry now because with watercolors it's to your advantage if you take breaks in a sense that things get to dry and then when you pick back up again and you start painting you'll have less of a difficult time with uh, things uh, blossoming and cauliflowering and things like that where you add a paint stroke over here and it starts to infiltrate into another area that you just painted that might be a lighter color and you got a darker color now going in there if that does happen no worries you keep a tissue handy and you just fold up your tissue like so and you and you just blot up if you have a problem where you have some things infiltrating other areas that you want to keep um, you know a lighter tonal value or a lighter color so you can use that tissue to blot up paint if you notice something goes a little bit uh, uh, the wrong way no big deal but if you do take breaks and let your paints dry a little bit you can also use a blow dryer to quick up you know quicken the process a little bit I use the blow dryer sometimes to make things go a little faster drying washes and things but here we're using pretty much a la prima we're using the direct pr approach where we're just going in and painting and we're not really doing glazings we're just doing the darks first and then work our way toward the lighter tonal values through the picture through the painting as we go all right let's take a quick break and we'll be back as soon as possible hey don't forget to subscribe hit that subscribe button would you please i know i mentioned it a lot but you have to remember there's a lot of other great artists out there on youtube i want you to come to my channel first all right so we'll see you in just a second All right, we're back again. We're painting. We're having a great time here. We're thinking of the shore, the ocean, the breezes, the seagulls flying around, squawking, the wind, the sand. Let's feel that feeling of being in, at the shore, at the beach, seeing the ocean. If we can just uh, think of those thoughts as we're painting before we start painting and while we're painting if we take a break and we just think right before we go back so that's what I was doing just now right before I'm coming back to paint I was just thinking about my vacations at the shore how much fun it is the great feelings the uh, just good times and it kind of just makes me in a good mood so let's get into a good mood we'll get back into it here and we're actually doing quite well here we have mostly uh, the main portion of the painting completed we have a lot of the uh, house here completed and the uh, neighboring house and the, and the trees and things so we're we're really this is uh, really coming along fine so the next thing we'd like to do is probably let's work the um, upper portion let's do some of the sky we can also shift to a larger brush maybe for the sky so I'm going to go with a uh, six uh, Raphael brush and I like the cerulean blue for the sky color and there's a little bit of uh, I put a little bit of uh, in the original I put a little bit of the ca uh, cadmium yellow in the sky color too just to sort of um, blend that color into other areas of the painting even though you might not see cadmium yellow in the sky um, it looks better so now I'll probably start out with some cerulean blue here and I'll just try to make a cloud shape here so I'm just going maybe around here making a cloud shape and then rinsing my brush and leaving it damp and then just smoothing out this edge here this cerulean blue And then I'll take some more of that cerulean blue. And I'm trying to paint along the top of that railing here on the top of the house. Sort of like an observation deck kind of thing. And then I rinse my brush again 
and leave it damp with water and just smooth this out and just kind of go with a kind of a V effect here and then a little bit of that green that's actually cadmium yellow and then we could go with some purple and burnt umber for some shadowing in the clouds here and again I rinse the brush off and add water to it not a lot I should I try to tap off some of the water maybe even a little bit of paints gray for that cloudy feel paints gray in the cloud a little bit there And then some more over here, and I'll do another kind of cloud feel, cerulean blue. And I want to leave a white border around the entire painting. So I'm not going to go all the way out to the furthest uh, point of the, the tape, where I have it taped off. All right, and some more of that Payne's Gray. And smooth that in there. And I could just lift up a little bit with tissue here if I go over the... I want to try to keep that border again of white paper. Alright, that looks pretty good. Now we can take our brush, our uh, number five, Da Vinci, with the cerulean blue. I dry off a little bit on the tissue, and we could do some railings here. And what's good is you do every once in a while along this line here. Not every location like that same here then we go in and get a different color some of that uh, burnt umber French ultramarine blue a little darker a little bit of the purple dry off the brush just a touch and then we can do a few more and this is a good Then a little bit of raw umber for a warmer feel. And we can add that into some of the ones, the spaces that we already put in. Then we can do our railing like that. This is French ultramarine blue, burnt umber. 
raw umber we can mix up a little bit. Stray paint though, don't use much water at all. And then we just go across the top like that. Hit and miss, not everywhere. That looks pretty good. And a little more detail under here. There might be a little bit of a shadow under here. Where this uh, top is to the building. So it looks good. Hit and miss a little bit. Not uh, straight across all the way. Leave some uh, gaps in the line. And that's looking fine. So we pretty much have the entire top of the picture good. Um, we can do our seagulls here. We can hear them chirping and squawking. And I would maybe let the paint dry in the sky before doing the seagulls. That might be better. Let's do that because I notice already it's going to start to the colors are going to get blended in with the sky. The sky is still very wet now. This sky wash we did was a lot of water. So you have to remember that. If you go in and do a sky wash, there's going to be a lot of water on the paper. That takes like 20 minutes or half an hour to dry. So we won't go back in to do any more of the seagull detail, details until later. Same thing with the uh, trees over here. Let's leave any details in the sky areas just completely. we got to wait till that dries like 100%. Now um, we can, we'll do our umbrella here. We have a nice red striped umbrella. And then we have a shadow under it with some purple and burnt umber and this French ultramarine blue. Let's get that shadow under there. And what else do we have here now? We can continue to get some more details. Let's do a little bit of this railing detail. Then we just use some washes that we have. We don't want to do every bit. We skip around with our lines. It's not good to fill in every line everywhere. It tends to uh, make the painting look um, overworked. Let's do uh, let's do some more over here. Okay, so now we're doing some lower windows. Let's do some green in there too. Maybe some Viridian. some pretty and green and I'll put a little bit in the sky I hope everyone's enjoying this this is fun we've done a lot of work so far and we're getting in our windows now on that first floor um, we can mix around let's do that Predominantly blue for the windows. They're, they're picking up the sky color, that's why I say that. So when we're doing windows, you're 
thinking it's picking up the sky color mostly. If you have green trees nearby, your windows will pick up the green, green color of the green. They reflect. They're basically windows a lot of times mirror the, uh, the uh, surroundings. So if you have tons of trees, you'll find that your um, windows will reflect that with green. If you have a lot of sky, that will reflect into the windows, the blue color. All right, so now we have the second or the first floor completed here. Let's do some So I'll do some spindles for the railings as we've been going along. Um, we try to mix up the colors on the railings a little bit. Um, blue, we could do some blue here and there. shadowy colors that kind of them maybe a little bit of purple and uh, brown and French ultramarine blue kind of like a grayish purple that looks good then we can go underneath the uh, top rail of the railings with some shadowy colors here and like that that's fine. Some sap green, raw umber. We have some some bushes here along the uh, sand, sand dune here. So that's a little bit of shadowing there. Raw umber. Okay, and we're going to get some sand color in here. Yellow ochre. sand color, some splashing. I just take the sand color and splash like that and get some speckles of paint on the sand to give it that feel. I add some cadmium lemon yellow to that, to these bushes over here. I think that looks good to uh, add that kind of bright green feel to it. some sand here raw umber maybe and I'm just trying to get some like angles with my brush like this to sort of like sort of lead the eye into the picture like this 
like that. Over here, I'm trying to keep the picture vignetted, so I want to lift up some of that. That's all. And that looks fine. The next thing we're going to do is um, get a little more of the details for the figures here in the foreground. Some more darker um, paint for the, some pine trees over here. And then over here we'll do some more f f finer details to these pine trees on the right. Some figures here by the um, upper floor here on the balcony. And over here by the umbrella. And I think we'll have a finished painting. So I. Um, I find that, again, taking breaks is really helpful, so I'm going to take another break, let this completely dry, so I'll take another, you know, 20 minutes, half an hour break, and uh, have a seat, maybe have some lunch, and then I'll come back, and we'll finish up. Okay. I'll be right back in a second. All right, we're back here. We're getting started again. We took a break. Again, breaks are great. Let that watercolor paper dry. Here it is, dry up on the sky area. <clears throat> we were trying to paint in a little bit of a detail on the seagulls here, and we noticed that uh, when we tried doing that, the paint just like blossomed and uh, diffused into the sky color. So we, if we want to get some details, we want to let that paper dry 100%, and then we get in our darker dark now. Um, dry off a little bit of the paint on a paper towel or a tissue, and we can get our seagulls. A little more details here, like that, and another one there, one there, and another one there. All right, so we have a couple seagulls now. We, we just added a little bit of dark uh, tonal value to those. Some French ultramarine blue and burnt umber, just to make them a little more, you know, exciting. And let's, uh, we're going to go in with a little bit of purple. Let's interrupt this, um, this line here. I noticed when I was coming back looking at the painting that I wanted to sort of add some shadowing to the um, to this bit of trim work that's along the balcony here so instead of leaving it all all completely white paper I just add a little bit of shadowing to it just a touch and there's a little more shadowing too here in that section over there and then here. And that's good. And always remember that when you're, um, this is just a good thing to keep in mind when you're doing a painting where there's, you know, a su substantial amount of details, you don't have to worry about, um, capturing every single detail you just you start out with the you start out with the main portion of your painting and then you can add more details as you go but you'd rather hold back on your details um, in the beginning and then toward the finishing of your painting as you're finishing up your painting then you can add more details if you if you like but it's sometimes better to leave it a little bit uh, lacking in a lot of fine details because there's already a lot here you can kind of see all the window shapes and the spindles those are of, of the uh, of the railings that's a lot of detail so there's so much detail happening in this painting we don't want to really just over bombard the viewer of the painting with with inc incredible amounts of detail because it'll sort of make it too busy in a sense so if that makes sense so let's uh, continue on here we we wanted to go with um, a little bit of shadowing under the mm. 
So here we're putting shadowing under the deck here, like that. And that follows the dark shadows we painted in the beginning. So all that was, was some cerulean blue with some green, some of the uh, mix of uh, cerulean blue and some olive green and sap green, but mostly cerulean blue and a little bit of uh, cobalt blue. And I add just a touch of warm colors into that shadow too. We could also add some cadmium red to make it more exciting. That cadmium red in there looks good to the shadowing. Brings like that warmth. It's hot, it's sunny, it's summertime. Okay, so that is... Looks good. We can add some larger shadowing effects here. So what I'm going to do is, instead of leaving a lot white paper, I'm going to add the blue sky color here and there to try to minimize that. That's all. A little bit of uh, blue, cerulean blue wash to minimize that white paper. And I just try to clean up that top edge of the railing a little bit. And I just try to make a little of my own creation here of some lines from the uh, top of the house outward into the sky just to make it look a little more interesting than just what's there. All right, now <clears throat> we're working right along. Let's do our figures. Cadmium red. Burnt sienna. And some yellow ochre for flesh colors. And we're going to do our colors here. There we go. And we're doing our figures. We start with the shoulders and the head and then the legs and then we leave a little spot for the uh, for the shorts and then we'll make the shorts straight paint nothing else let's go with cerulean blue straight straight cerulean blue go and maybe some cadmium red let's do some cadmium red shorts here 
and maybe some viridian green, straight viridian green for these over here, bathing trunks we have on. Some more flesh colors. And maybe we have a, uh, maybe a blue bucket there. And a shadow color, purple. And some blue in there. And if your shadow colors look too extreme or something, you know, you can always just Tap them up with a tissue and start over again. And again, you can always just lift up a little bit of paint if you have to, no big deal. And we have some little cart or something is over here. And we use some burnt umber for some hair color. shadow over there. I wanted to put that shadow in before but now we have nice dry 100% dry paper over there we're good with that shadow and then now we'll do some hurricane fence that'll be burnt umber, burnt sienna, a little bit of cerulean there just to add for some warm and cool and let's let's get our uh, Hurricane fence here. A little bit of uh, glitter and crimson. All right, and then we see. that we get very, very minimal over here. We don't have to spell out every single uh, bit of the fence. We can kind of let that be as it is there. And then over here we do the same thing. We got some more fence posts over here. And that's it for that side here and then we're going to do a couple more over here a couple more fence hurricane fence like that
purple, French ultramarine blue, purple. A little bit of burnt umber mixed in there for some shadowing. And that's some shadowing there we're going to do. And we'll do a little shadow up here on the umbrella on the wall. Couple splashes. All right. And we'll go with some sap green. French ultramarine blue. <clears throat> that makes a nice pine, dark pine needles. And we'll just add those in there for some ad additional details here. There we go. And a couple more over here. And we'll use that dark. We'll go right over here and do the windows. Just to reintroduce some darks there. Some shadowing here. And I think we need some trim color here, like that. And some shadow color here. And yeah, maybe some cadmium red and cadmium orange mixed in with a little bit of our burnt sienna. And we'll do some clay pots on the top here for the chimneys. I think we are almost 100% complete here. We have everything pretty good. Maybe some more green, sap green. And we'll use our um, we we'll use our number eight um, <clears throat> needlepoint brush here, and we're going to get some of the fine grasses and details of this. The, down the shore, you'll always see beautiful grass weeds, tall grass, all kinds of interesting things. So let's get that in there. couple of those bits of uh, details so we want to get some of the 
like that. We will add some darker darks there. And I'll dry off my brush a little bit and just to get the uh, the wiring for the uh, fence. Just like that. Over here. And there's some shadowing over here. And I think we still have a little bit of um, figures here. Let's do some figures up here. So those are figures up here. They were having some lunch on the uh, upper deck here and we could add a little bit of shadowing. And this is where we just make believe we know what we're doing. When we don't, we're just trying to add some There we go, a couple figures up top. Maybe three figures here. And then we have some more figures up top here. And some more. So we have two figures here. And they're just enjoying the day, just looking out over the sun and the ocean and Again, we, we just tap in some colors, just tiny bits of colors to just show the little bit of a figures behind there. And again, if it, if it gets, uh, the washes don't look great, you can always lift up with a tissue and start again. And then I'll do some more red, cadmium red. And, and that should, that's fine, that looks good. And we can add like a little bit of interesting, there's somebody with their arm there. No whole dot here. And we'll do some more details on that pine tree over here. And again, we've been working quite a bit, so we're We're trying to keep our focus here, and this was a pine tree over here. Looks good. Maybe a little more shadowing on the this side over here. We can shadow this side a little bit with some warm and cool. It's not an, uh, the brightness is not as much. I might have gotten that shadowing, that shadowing might not be 100%. So we can, we can just go right over that. And I lift up a little bit of the, 
it dries a lot lighter. So I went over with that darker shadow area on the side of the house here, but it'll dry a lot lighter. But I wanted to lift up just a little bit with a tissue there. But you can see that the sunlight's really ca catching this side of the, the house, on this back of the house here. And on the side, not so much, so you have that shadow on this side. But other than that, everything looks fine. This is a good painting. It looks fine. It looks fresh. I'll add some more green in there. Some cadmium yellow, actually. To livey, liven that up a little bit. Make that more lively looking over here. So we have everything that looks really fine. We have we have the gorgeous house here. We have uh, an adjacent house here next to it. Gives it some interesting uh, dynamics. You have a house and then another house next door here. You have, we have figures, children playing on the beach, having a great time to come back to the house for lunch maybe or dinner. We have figures on the top of the balcony of the house. It's the seagulls flying around. It's a beautiful day at the shore. Um, it looks great. Plenty of bright sunlight in this picture here. You can kind of see the feel of the sunlight with the shadowing underneath. We create beautiful light with shadows and um, some sand and some you know, beautiful uh, hurricane fencing goes along with any shore scene beautifully. Some pine trees, nice blue sky, cerulean blue, purple, some uh, Payne's gray in there. Everything you like about a gorgeous scene for the shore is right here. Let's try this. Give it a shot. Take your time. Take your time. Go as slow as you need to. The hardest part is really getting the start with the drawing correctly. Once you have the drawing in though, you're, you're fine. You can do this in even a smaller scale. You can take a simple, uh, something like a simple idea of a house, a smaller house maybe, just a simple um, cottage type house and do that with a little bit of the same trees and bushes and a little bit of figures and you have a, a nice painting too as well so you can take this concept and just ch change it around and make it into a simpler format if you don't feel like going through all the um, more details of what we have here but but it's all fine and good and again we still have to do a few more things let's come right back in a second or two again please subscribe if you haven't subscribed we do great paintings like this all the time if you hit the uh, notification bell next to subscribe you'll be notified when our paintings do come out every week and uh, let's come back for just another maybe five, ten minutes. We're going to add in some uh, bright lights with some white titanium white paint mixed with a little touch of um, yellow ochre. We'll show you how we can add a little more detail to this because it is missing some some details that we need to get in. So we'll we'll show you in just a second how to how to do that. Okay. All right. We'll be right back. All right. So we're finishing up our last bit of details on our painting here and what I'd like to do is maybe if I can I'm going to uh, move over the uh, palette here so we can get the uh, painting a little more close to the uh, video here so I'll peel off the tape I have this tape down all four sides with some artist tape and we'll just peel off the tape here and I'll re I'll use some of this tape to uh, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Okay, there we go. So now at this point you could pause the video and work from this when you're doing your painting. So you see a close-up of all the colors, the shadowing, the different features that we had that we painted. And uh, also, we're going to just add some details with our uh, titanium white paint. So we have titanium white here. Um, let's take a look and just see how this looks detail-wise. Okay, that looks good. 
So I'm just going to take some titanium white in the tube. I'll take a little bit of yellow ochre on my paintbrush and just put that into the top of the paint. Now here on this painting there was some posts that hold up this uh, second floor balcony. So I just want to see if we can get that a few of those posts in here. And this will make it look a little more uh, This will look a little more realistic. We have the, the posts here. And the same over here. And a couple of those vertical lines as posts underneath here really help the, the architectural look of the painting so that we have those posts uh, along the underside of this balcony. And uh, for the most part, I think we can put some highlights on our figures maybe. And a couple highlights on the shoulders of the, the figures. And uh, other than that, this looks fine. Everything looks good. So again, just adding those few little highlights with the titanium white and a little bit of uh, yellow ochre mixed in there just to, you know, give it a little bit of a warm uh, white feel to it. Um, There might be a few spots here. That we could add a few more lights. I noticed the uh, windows here might be a little bit... Uh, could use a few of those highlights. Other than that though, everything does look pretty good. And a couple splashes never hurt on the... Uh, some of the uh, tree areas and bushes areas. Alright, so I hope you work on this. Have fun with it. It's really enjoyable. Again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Come along. Each week we do new videos on every type of uh, subject matter you can imagine. We do paintings like this where we do architecture, houses, buildings, seascapes, landscapes, cityscapes, still life. We do flowers. We do it all. So come on by. Hit that subscribe button. It's a journey. Keep practicing. Have fun. And uh, we'll see you on the next video. Okay? Bye-bye.